Okay. <clears throat> so, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Choba Baraj, and I'll be your host for this session. I'm a lean coach at uh, Lean Enterprise Institute Hungary. And uh, let me introduce. Chaba, I, I cannot hear you. I'm not sure if the others can. Still not. No. <clears throat> you are not uh, muted, but the voice disappeared somehow. Okay, and then I think I will continue without you. And uh, thank you for the introduction, by the way. It was a bit a uh, quick one. Um, but then I think I will find my own way. So I go back. Uh, yeah, you are back. Okay, so there was no one issue until now. Great, we <laughs> tried several times. So you, you haven't heard anything. Okay, let's start again. So welcome everybody. My name is Chaba Barhaj, and I'll be your host for uh, for this session. I'm a, a lean coach at Lean Enterprise Institute Hungary. And let me introduce Fruzina Irinyash, who is our guest speaker. Uh, Fruzina works at uh, Synlab, which is a multinational uh, laboratory diagnostic company. And Fruzi is the lean leader for the Hungarian operation. And as for the presentation itself, Fruzi will guide us through uh, how they solve the quantity fluctuation problem related to incoming blood samples coming from the blood collection point, which had a negative impact on the work, uh, workload balance in the laboratory. So I think it's pretty exciting. But before we just jump in, just let me clarify some, some topics related to the timing and the questions. So uh, the presentation is about uh, 20 minutes. So we will have five or six minutes for the questions. So if you would like to uh, submit a question uh, related to the presentation itself, please uh, please use the Q and A section on the on the right menu. And if you don't see it, if you just see the icons, in that case, please click on the click on the. The icon, which is exactly the same for the session, so the, the people are on the table, so you can click on it and you will see the Q&A and the poll and chat the section, so please use the Q&A. Um, that's all from my side. So uh, let's start the presentation. So Fuji, the virtual stage is yours. Thanks, Chaba, for the introduction. I warmly welcome all the participants on this session. My topic for today will be how to introduce lean thinking at a laboratory diagnostics company, more specifically at uh, Synlab Hungary. Synlab is a multinational company presented in 40 countries. It was founded in 1998 and throughout several mergers and acquisitions, it became the largest provider of laboratory diagnostic services in Europe. Synlab Hungary is part of the Synlab group and as such, it's uh, the biggest laboratory diagnostics provider in the, in the country. We are present in more than 100 locations and perform around 45 million tests per year. In Hungary, similarly like in other countries, Synlab went through several mergers and acquisitions. And as a result of that, there are many different inherited processes, as well as diverse informatic systems. This colorful but challenging operating model creates the need for lean process improvements to be able to serve the customers at a high quality level. Let's uh, take a quick and high level look how the process itself looks like. In case the customer or the patient needs a sample testing, let it be blood or urine or saliva or any other kind, 
he goes into the blood collection point and the sample taking happens. Once it's done, his samples are packed properly together with the connecting documents and handed over for transportation into the laboratory. At the laboratory, the first step is the intake area where we make sure that the samples arrive in proper condition with all the relevant documents. And both the sample as well as the request form is handed over for administration. After the administration part, the sample goes into the laboratory and all the requested tests are being performed. And when it's ready, the validation uh, should happen to make sure that the final report is reliable. And finally, the patient gets the final report. Like in many other processes, numerous things can go wrong. That risks the quality of the service. To decrease the probability of this, we have launched the process improvement projects. Our lean journey started approximately a year ago when we tried to map the current state and understand the value stream in the laboratory pre-analytics department. Through that, we could identify our key improvement projects, which were divided into two major categories. One category is for those improvements that aim to reduce the fluctuation in quality, and the other one is for those ones that target to reduce the fluctuation in quantity. The selected area in the laboratory was the pre-analytics lab intake department, uh, because in the lab, everything starts there, basically. Our focus was to reduce the fluctuation in quality and quantity, but let's stop for a while and see what can be a quality problem in the laboratory intake. There are two major buckets, quality issues with the sample or quality issues with the documentation. With a sample, it can happen that less sample arrive than needed for a test, for example, or the sample can be damaged or it can happen that it's not in the right condition. For example, it should be frozen, but it's on room temperature. With the documentation, a quality problem can be if it's not filled in properly or incorrect tests are added to the request form. In all these cases, there is a very high risk that the patient either doesn't get the final report or get it, but in an incorrect way. Due to all priorly mentioned errors, we implemented a pre-quality check uh, function to identify the problems at an early stage of the process. We separated the happy flow from the unhappy flow to make sure that these categories flow into the right direction in the process. And all these improvements created the need to adjust the layout as well to the newly established functions and processes. With that, we managed to create a more transparent process and material flow in the pre-analytics area. The fluctuation of quantity means that the number of incoming samples into the laboratory is not flat and peaks are generated within the day. To solve this problem, a so-called level loading project was launched. And today I will share with you this very concrete project example of level loading. The project focused on uh, clinical chemistry and immunology sample arrival into the pre-analytics laboratory an A3 problem solving methodology was applied, and now I will guide you through the A3 sections. So first, we will take a look at the background. At the initial stage, there were only feelings and assumptions about the severity of the problem. We heard from many colleagues that too many samples arrive into the lab in the afternoon that generates peak times and they must do a lot of overtime to be able to finish the processing the samples. At this stage, no one could really quantify what is a lot or too many. Therefore, we started a manual data collection and analysis. With that, we got a picture that the fluctuation is averaged 729 pieces of samples per hour. So this is the spread plus minus. This fluctuation indeed generates peaks during the day. The morning period is underloaded while the afternoon period is overloaded. So the employees should work in the afternoon and evening shifts as well as do overtime to finish processing the samples at the same day, which is a must requirement in case of clinical chemistry and immunology uh, samples. After seeing the exact number of sample arrival fluctuation, we needed to dig deeper to understand how the processes look like that creates this problematic outcome. 
four departments were involved in the core process. Obviously, there are many more departments who are impacted or somehow part of uh, uh, the flow, but we were mainly focusing on these four departments that you see on this page. The blood collection points, the logistics team, the laboratory intake and administration. So these are the four ones. From each department, I will highlight only the most important facts uh, that we should be aware of. So the blood collection point uh, generally performs the sample taking from 7 a.m. until 11 a.m. The logistics team has nine logistic routes across the country, plus the capital city and the surrounding of the capital city. We call it Pest County in Hungary. Uh, these logistic routes uh, include several pickup points. The lab intake department has a processing capacity of around 1,700 samples per hour and faces with huge peaks when even three or four people is needed at the same time to be able to um, accept or receive the samples. The administration can start only after the intake is ready with the sample receiving. While uh, we were defining our targets and goals, we, we set two. One was to reduce the fluctuation of incoming samples during the morning from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. to 300 pieces instead of the uh, 729 spread. And the other was to double the number of incoming samples during, the, uh, during a specific slot, which was from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m., because that one was very low. To meet these goals, we needed to investigate even more to clarify what prevents us from reaching the target state. Throughout some uh, GAMBA observations and data collection, it turned out that there are several reasons in the background. We investigated that only 35% of the samples arrive into the laboratory between uh, 8 and 12 a.m because the samples um, uh, packages cannot be handed over to the logistics team earlier, since the registration and the sample packaging at the blood collection point is a highly manual process. And additionally, uh, there is a process step that we identified that a centrifugation must be performed uh, for the samples, and it takes time. It was also surprising to see that most of the samples, exactly 65% of them, arrive into the laboratory after 1 p.m. because the transportation is too long. Since the logistics team is operating with routes that consist of several pickup points and pickup locations. The reason behind this method is to maximize the fee rate of the cars, both on short as well as on long distances. For these potential causes, uh, these three, what you see uh, marked with yellow, we proposed certain solutions and started to test them at pilot locations to see which can work and which cannot. The pilot locations were in the capital city and the surrounding in Pest County, which is the closest to the city, because these were those locations from where it was the easiest to transport the samples into the laboratory with the shortest lead time. Regarding the manuality in the packaging process, we were able to create a digital solution which was using barcode readers with the combined Excel solutions. In case of centrifugation, we were consulting with the medical team and decided that for the last samples at the blood collection point, they can skip the centrifugation process because the only importance is that within four hours um, from the blood taking until uh, the laboratory analysis, uh, the, the sample should arrive into the lab and uh, the test and the examination should start. If we are in these four hours, then we can skip uh, the for the last samples the centrifugation. Um, then for the logistics team, at first glance, we propose to hire either external or internal resources, additional resources, who can transport the samples by uh, bike or motorbike. This seemed to be the most uh, logical or, or the easiest solution to make sure that we can integrate new routes. But after a deeper process analysis, 
it turned out that we can manage with the available resources with some changes in the method, in the transportation method. This change meant that we implemented new direct transportation routes. So we were dividing the original ones into uh, smaller ones and direct ones in the capital city and also in the surrounding. So uh, we identified the test locations and these locations we tested um, with a daily two pickup and direct transport. After that, we, or parallelly with that, we set up an operating mechanism to ensure the success of the project. It meant that we established the core team uh, involving all the relevant stakeholders from the different impacted department. You can imagine it like involving the leaders of the blood collection point, the leaders and the team from the logistics team, also from the laboratory intake, because we needed everyone uh, to be at the same page and have uh, very frequent consultations, which meant that weekly we had a meeting and daily we had memos about how the how the day went. So how it was, um, how successful it was or even not successful and maybe we needed to adjust something. We tested every pilot location for two weeks and continuously adjusted uh, based on the observations and the learnings. When the first wave of the uh, project was closed, we still did many follow-ups, uh, follow-up meetings and follow-up uh, actions and tasks as well. We were asking feedbacks from the stakeholders, from the bad collection point, from the laboratory intake, and we were collecting and analyzing the data still manually, but at least we could see if the improvements are sustainable or not. And this is what you see on the bottom of this page, a before and an after uh, state. So the project was successful in a way that what we targeted, we could reach. So doubling, if you remember, we uh, wanted to double the number of incoming samples in the uh, period of 10 to 11. It was successful. Also, we wanted to make the morning uh, more flat, uh, which was, I would say, partially successful. Uh, we still couldn't uh, go into the details with the 12 till 1 p.m. Uh, section because that was the one from where we uh, redirected samples to the 10 to 11 uh, section. So um, we will now focus on the next steps of this project. And nowadays we have just launched the second wave of the project and started to increase the 12 till 1 p.m. period, as well as level loading the afternoon by redesigning the countryside logistic routes. So we will not uh, anymore concentrate only on the capital city and the surrounding, but we will touch the countryside uh, blood collection points and pickup points as well. By working on this project, we had many learnings. We realized that small experiments, one by one pilot approach works better than big changes at a time. Also, we learned that we should not be afraid of changing the method or the way of work. Um, because many times we heard that we have always done it this way, so why should we change? But once we were able to dedicate enough time to figure out how it can be done differently, we managed to avoid unnecessary investments. One more takeaway is that small batch processing instead of big batches can work not only in manufacturing, but it can work in healthcare too. And finally, uh, this project greatly exemplifies, I think, that precise data is a must on the medical report, but it's indispensable in the process operations too. With that, I would like to thank you uh, for your attention. And if there is any question related to this project, I'm standing at your disposal. Chaba, we cannot hear you, you are muted. Still not. Maybe you can rejoin like priorly.
now? Okay. Now it's okay. It works. Now it's okay. Great. We tested one hour. <laughs> it worked perfectly. And now two times I try to, to, to say something and it doesn't work. I love it. Uh, okay. So, so we haven't received a question so far. So, uh, so let me ask one. So we started, uh, so this was one of the first projects when we started to work together on, on lean transformation at Simlab. So what was uh, your experience with the team when you, when we started to apply the A3 methodology, which was the, which was the biggest uh, challenge for the team where they struggled? I think the, the whole project uh, was a challenge, uh, not because it was complex, obviously, yes, but because the whole lean journey uh, in the company started a year ago. So it was a very fresh uh, kind of thinking or way of thinking, and the A3 was not known at all. So it was a very brand new uh, type of problem solving, let's phrase it that way. So it was not easy. And uh, also it was a bit challenging to um, make everyone understand why these steps are needed, why these seven uh, steps of uh, A3 problem solving is really needed. But uh, it took time, but we really invested the time to make sure that the people understand uh, why we do that. And I think it was a good, uh, kind of pilot project in a way that I was doing the A3 and everyone else was supporting. So it was not just, you know, handing over that, hey, do a project like this, because it wouldn't have been successful, I think. But once we did it together and we were drawing together, I think uh, after a point, it was even fun uh, for the team. And the other question, uh, what you were asking, like which was the most challenging part uh, in the A3? I think uh, understanding the current conditions. Uh, at the beginning of the of my presentation, I think I mentioned that there were uh, feelings and assumptions uh, about, you know, the what is too many and how big is the overload and such. But we really needed data, and and that was. Uh, that was a huge uh, other way of thinking for the team in this project. Now your voice disappeared again. Now, yeah. can you hear me again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we have a question that how many people in the A3 team, how many people you had? So who were involved, like logistic and like, yeah, which, yeah, yeah. which departments um, were involved? Logistic leader uh, was the one for sure. Also, we had um, the leader from the intake uh, department. Also, we had the leader from the blood collection point. And additionally, we had those ones who were kind of uh, support or resources. So not on day-to-day -day basis uh, connected to the A3 or writing and drawing and such. But once we had any question, like regarding the centrifugation, we had a, a professional medical question, then we had those ones who were jumping in and were able to help us to understand what we can do and what we cannot, or we are not allowed uh, to do because it would uh, be a problem with the regulations and such. So I would say that the core team was around three to five and additionally, uh, all the other supporting members. Chaba, uh, you don't have voice again. Now? Yes, now it's good. Okay, I will. I will learn uh, the activity games so I can mm -hmm. I can show the questions. 
next time I practice. So uh, the question is that it's interesting to see a lean project on reducing uh, load fluctuation. Why did the frequency at uh, 5 p.m. increase? These samples have increased time taken from two to four. Mm, no, not because of that, because uh, because of the period. So we didn't touch uh, the afternoon yet. Only the more only we were focusing on the morning. So whatever changed in the morning, it was due to the fact that this project was launched. But why the the seven or uh, the five till six uh, p.m. increased? It was because the whole number of arriving samples, so the total, uh, was increasing. It was not because we touched anything there uh, from the two, or not yet, because this will be now our uh, second wave of the project. This is what we are starting now to uh, make sure that the afternoon can be flat as well, but still have some uh, other to-dos in the morning. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. So, have you already started the the the, the project for the for the afternoon? So, can you share some um, some uh, details on 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 the afternoon project? Because we started. We saw that yes, big piece. We started the the afternoon project, but not so long ago. So, I cannot share a lot of details, but I can share with you that we are understanding now the current conditions so we needed to see again how it looks like because this project what i was introducing to you started last year around november december and one year passed so even you can see that the number of incoming samples are different and we can uh, identify that maybe uh, there is also a difference uh, in the in the periods, like from two to three, how many samples we have? It's not the same as it was uh, last year. So we need to do again uh, the data collection and understand how currently the afternoon looks like. And uh, parallelly, the logistics team uh, started to examine the afternoon transportation routes. So they are seeing the countryside ones and try to uh, brainstorm a bit that how they can uh, divide it into more or how we can be more flexible with the transportation in the afternoon. Now I would say that rather it's the brainstorming uh, phase and understanding um, how it looks like now and then we will move uh, to the other parts of the A3. I think uh, next year around Q1 uh, we will have the tangible benefits and impacts. Do you hear me or just I have to leave hear it? You. I can hear you. At the end, it will be perfect. Mm -hmm. So the time, the timeline, because uh, just just the question on the timeline. So uh, because A3 can be sometimes uh, very long. So what was the timeline for this project? So how long does it take? Uh, I think it was, um, if I'm very strict with concentrating on the A3, and the first uh, wave and the first successes, I would say that it was around uh, half a year. But but uh, highlighting the fact that it was a tiny piece. So we were managing, you know, the 10 to 11 uh, slot and the bit the 9 to 10, so uh, touching the morning, but it's not the whole picture and even it was uh, time consuming. Your voice disappeared for the last for our last minute. <laughs> uh, okay, I love the tech uh, technical issues. Uh, so I think we are just run out of time. So thank you very much. Thank you very th thanks guys, and uh, I hope you enjoy that. And thank you, Fuji, for the for the perfect presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bye, and Bye. thanks for everyone else. Have a very nice day. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.